Hi, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Gold with an extra video update for you after the market or New York session has closed. For Tuesday the 26th of September, I'm analysing the gold spot price. The bigger picture reverts to seeing a pullback continue here to about 1261. It could be lower, it could go as low as 1170 to 1158, but price doesn't move in straight lines. The short term picture is unclear. We could see some more of this big sideways chop that we've seen for the last couple of days. I say that because downward movement for Tuesday's session has lighter volume than yesterday's upward movement. The fall in price today does not have support from volume. The market fell of its own weight and that indicates a possible B wave. We'll get to what that means in Elliott wave terms when we get to daily and weekly, sorry, daily and hourly charts. Elliott wave analysis first, classic analysis last. I have two Elliott wave counts at the weekly chart level. I expect that gold is in a B wave at cycle degree. B waves are the worst of all structures to try and analyse because they exhibit the greatest variety in structure and price behaviour. There are more than 23 possible structures a B wave can take. At this stage I've narrowed it down to just two. Here cycle wave B may be unfolding as a double zigzag. The first zigzag in the double is labelled primary wave W. The double is joined by a three in the opposite direction. It's a zigzag labelled X. And here we may have the start of a second zigzag subdividing 5, 3, 5 with intermediate wave C going to be a long, big, exaggerated five wave impulse. So I say that because of the duration of this pullback here, which for this wave count would be minor wave 2. There are two problems though at the weekly chart level for this wave count. Here primary wave X is very deep and X waves, and it's also time consuming, X waves within double zigzags are usually brief and shallow. That's because for double zigzags they should have a very clear strong slope. To achieve a strong slope, if they have big time consuming corrections it gives them more of a sideways look. The second problem is within primary wave Y the structure for intermediate wave D B has a really good fit and could be a double flat correction but in my over 9 years, nearly 10 years it'll be soon, of daily Elliott wave analysis on up to well from 1 to 5 markets and all of that time I'm sure I've only seen one double flat correction which in hindsight was definitely a double flat. I think that they are actually very very rare structures, rarer even than running flats. The rarity of this structure which has to be seen in this way to make the wave count work must necessarily reduce the probability of this wave count at the weekly chart level. If primary wave Y is unfolding as a zigzag it will be 5, 3, 5 and we can draw an Elliott channel around it from the start of A to the end of B with a parallel copy on the end of A. It's around about where price is finding resistance. It, fit, it fitted perfectly here and we've got overshoots, that's okay. Along the way up, downward corrections should find very, very strong support at the lower edge of the Elliott channel. If minor wave 2 is a deep time consuming correction, it can't move beyond the start of 1, below 1205.41, but it shouldn't get near that point. It should find such strong support at the lower edge of this Elliott channel. If it does reach that deep, that should be where price strongly bounces. If this trend line is properly breached at the daily chart level by a full daily candlestick below and not touching this trend line, I will discard this wave count at the weekly chart level prior to price and validating it because a clear strong breach of this support line would not be expected if primary Y is continuing. When I have more structure with an intermediate wave C to use to calculate the target at minor degree at that stage it will probably change. For now we'll leave it the same at 1452 where primary Y would reach equality in length with primary wave W and it would achieve its purpose. This purpose of the second zigzag in a double is to deepen the correction. Now while this is labelled WXY it can't be a combination for cycle wave B. If it was a combination we'd have to be seeing primary Y 
as a flat correction. We'd have a zigzag for the first structure and the second structure would be a flat expected. But B failed by quite a wide margin to retrace a 90% length of A. No matter where you see A ending here, here or here. And so a flat correction for primary Y has been discarded and so it must be a zigzag if cycle wave B is a double. Let's have a look now at the daily chart where intermediate B, low, is this point down here. I have published a video for members only which showed how I worked the subdivisions at the hourly chart level for this third wave. This upward movement really is very choppy and overlapping. There's a lot of overlapping in here. It is possible to see Minuet Wave 3 here, a complete impulse. It does suffer from a problem of disproportion at the hourly chart level though. But what does look clear now at the daily chart level is this is one wave and this is a separate wave. This is not part of this wave so they should be labelled at the same degree. And so we have a first wave complete up here and now we're looking at a second wave correction. There are two possible structures for minor wave 2. On this main count I'm going to label as a double zigzag but when I get to the second wave count you'll see how it could also be labelled as a single zigzag. That makes a little bit of a difference. Let's look at the double zigzag first. If this labelling is correct we've got a 535 zigzag complete down here, the first zigzag in the double. We should have a brief shallow X wave in the opposite direction and now a 535 zigzag continuing lower for minute wave Y that may pull minor wave 2 down to reach the 0.618 Fibonacci ratio of minor wave 1 and that's a really common place for a second wave to end. Now here's the problem, if minor wave 2 is a double zigzag, if this labelling is correct then we really should be expecting minute wave X to be over because double zigzags should have a strong slope against the prior trend. This should have a strong downward slope. In order to achieve a strong downward slope the second zigzag should deepen the correction beyond the first and the X wave is almost always brief and shallow and so if this is a double zigzag minute wave X should be over here. I am a little bit concerned about that labelling though because there is a bit of a lack of support today from volume for this downward movement. The market fell of its own weight. And so when we get to the daily chart for the next wave count you'll see another way it could possibly be labelled. Let's have a look at how it fits if it's a double zigzag at the hourly chart level where minute wave W is this point down here. From this low to this high what does look very clear now is this upward movement is a three wave structure. You could try and see it as a five but I think that really would be pushing it. It subdivides very nicely five, three, as a zigzag. Now that could be minute wave X complete or it could be just the start of minute wave B to continue sideways and higher. We'll look at that idea when we see the labelling for the second wave count. And so the labelling for the short term subdivisions will fit both ways for both wave counts. If this is an X wave then it's a brief shallow zigzag in the opposite direction and now we'd be looking for a 5 three five zigzag downward to complete minute y to pull minor two down to the 0.618 Fibonacci ratio of minor wave one. Within it minuet b may not move beyond the start of a above 1313.39 but here's where minuet wave b if it turns out to be a deep bounce should find very very strong resistance. It should last one two or three days so it should be a sideways chop or a quick sharp zigzag and if it does get this high it should find strong resistance here. If this trend line is breached by upward movement I would relabel minor wave 2 as a single zigzag as per the labelling for the second wave count. At the weekly chart level this is the second wave count it is still possible that cycle wave B is a huge big sideways triangle with a zigzag for A and B, a double zigzag for C, that's the most common triangle subwave to be the more complicated double zigzag. So now we'd be expecting a double zigzag down for D, sorry, a single zigzag down for E, and then finally a single zigzag up for E, which should fall short of the AC trend line. Within a contracting triangle, 
primary D may not move beyond the end of B below 1123.08 within a barrier triangle primary D should end about the same level as primary B and so in practice what that means is it can move very slightly below 1123.08 the rule is as long as the BD trend line remains essentially flat a barrier triangle will remain valid unfortunately that's the only Elliott wave rule which is not black and white it involves a fair grey area of subjectivity Let's have a look at how this may be unfolding. Oh, before we go to the daily chart, there is only one problem with this wave count. It's the AC trend line. It doesn't have as strong a slope as triangle trend lines usually do. It's a small problem, but that's the only problem I can see at this stage with this wave count. This wave count has a better fit in terms of subdivisions for this piece of movement. If we see this upward wave as a zip, double zigzag, 535x535 then we can see this upward movement as a zigzag which kind of fits wave behavior a bit better and we avoid trying to see a double flat correction in here which is a problem for the first wave count okay let's take a look at the daily chart now where the high label primary c is this point up here if primary c is over here then primary d should be a single zigzag downward and it should be still unfolding Intermediate wave A would probably still be incomplete. It should last a bit longer than this first five down. And so we may have a five unfolding three and then a five down for a third wave. I'm going to label minor wave two here as incomplete. And notice that from this high to this low, I've got two different ways of seeing this downward movement. And this is the core problem with Elliott wave rule and why using classic analysis is such a big advantage. Sometimes, or not sometimes, actually quite often, it's absolutely impossible to tell with certainty if a wave subdivides as a three-wave zigzag or a five-wave impulse. And there are two ways to see this downward movement. It could be seen as a five or it could be seen as a three. Here I'm looking at it as a five. We have an impulse for one. This is a double combination, not a running flat. This is a double combination for two, impulse for three, zigzag for four, impulse for five and so it could be a five wave structure down here now to be followed by a second wave correction the labeling for the first wave count at the daily chart could also be a five incomplete three and then a five down because one two three of an unfolding impulse subdivides five three five exactly the same as an unfolding zigzag now our attention has to turn to the structure of minor wave 2. It could be possible to label it over here but that would be really far too brief and shallow for a second wave correction. It does fit very nicely as a zigzag but when the first zigzag of a correction is too brief and shallow you have to consider the possibility of a double zigzag to deepen the correction or an expanded flat. Let's have a look at those ideas at the hourly chart level where minor wave 1 low is this point down here and so minor wave 2 could be a double zigzag w x y to move up to the 0.618 ratio about 1330 it certainly also could be an expanded flat correction labeled a b to move lower and then c b of an expanded flat must reach a 1.05 length of a and all flat corrections have a minimum requirement of a 90% length for B in relation to A. That minimum requirement hasn't been yet met yet, but it certainly could be in the next few hours. So we have to keep open minds about what structure this sideways chop may be. Because there is a lack of support from volume, not a strong lack of support but some lack of support we do have to keep open minds about what this downward movement may be it certainly could be a B wave okay let's have a look at some classic analysis now I'm just going to go over the weekly chart quickly because for members I did this in the last end of week video so this is the weekly chart as at the close of last week it doesn't include the unfolding current week and it can't because that week is incomplete and so up to the end of last week we had a couple of strong weekly candlesticks with 
a very slight decline in volume for the second week over the first. It was very slight, but the fall in price not very well supported by volume at this stage. On balance volume is at weak support, suggesting a bounce, and that might be what we're about to see. 80, or might be what is unfolding at the moment. ADX indicates an upward trend in its early stages and so at the weekly chart level until proven otherwise we should assume that this is a pullback within a larger upward trend. In light of volume for downward weeks supports that view. ATR though is still very very low and still at the weekly chart level remaining pretty much flat that does support the idea of that second wave count for the bigger picture, a big triangle unfolding. That's exactly the kind of weakness you would expect to see as a triangle moves past its halfway mark. RSI neutral room for price to rise or fall. What about the daily chart level for the session? Price moved higher with a higher high and a higher low, the definition of upward movement, but the candlestick is red and the balance of volume is down. Downward movement during this session has lighter volume than the previous upward day and so we have to say that during Tuesday's session the fall in price is not supported by volume and so it is suspicious. Be suspicious it could be a B wave. We also have a couple of long lower wicks on these two candlesticks supporting the idea of another upward day. So we could be seeing a price moving into a small consolidation whipsawing around that resistance area about 1305 to 1310 about um, just a little bit above and below for a small consolidation. Prices finding resistance about the short term Fibonacci 13 day moving average and support about the mid term 55 day moving average consolidating at the stage between those two. I think it would be wisest to use on balance volume in this instance. It's now constrained within these two trend lines and if it continues a little bit further the lower trend line is going to offer reasonable technical significance. That this upper trend line is new but it's only just been able to be drawn with this turn down today. It offers weak resistance and weak technical significance. A breakout above resistance or below support would offer a signal from on balance volume which often leads price if we get a bullish or bearish signal we will then expect price to move in that direction let's watch that one very carefully RSI is neutral there's room for price to rise or fall ADX tells us that the market is probably in a consolidation but it is a lagging indicator based on a 14 day average. It's declining and the directional lines are whipsawing so it's not giving us any clear indication of a trend. While price is moving lower, however, ATR is showing an increase. Now that's normal for ATR to show an increase during a trend, but we also have Bollinger Bands contracting, contradicting the message from ATR. Stochastics is oversold, but it can remain extreme for longer periods of time. If we're getting a little bit of a consolidation, which continues for another couple of days or so, that could pull stochastics back up into neutral territory, allowing price for room, room to fall again. And remember, RSI is quite a long way over from oversold, plenty of room for price to fall. MACD remaining bearish, again, that's quite a lagging indicator. So overall this picture really is quite mixed. Let's take cues from volume being slightly lighter today, the candlesticks being bullish and on balance volume. I want to remain neutral until I get a signal from on balance volume and then I'm going to take that one quite seriously. That's all from me today with your extra video update and I hope all our members are having a fabulous day.